let us now discuss reward modeling as discussed earlier <coughs> modeling the reward function is important in almost all of the policy gradient based uh, rl algorithms because advantage function is based on reward the value function is based on reward and so on that appears uh, in the loss function of all the policy gradient optimization algorithms now how is it done in practice is as follows if you recall the reward function was a function that operates on the cross product of the state space and the action space and maps it into a real number now practically what it does is that it takes a state and an action as input and associates that state and action pair with a real number which signifies how good the action was so now given a particular state and an action s comma a it will give you some real number r that would tell us how good the given pair of state and action was now from a first look it looks like suppose we have data that has state and actions and the corresponding reward that has been uh, annotated then training the reward model in a supervised in a, in a classical supervised learning framework is trivial right because this is simply a regression problem so typically or rather suppose there were suppose there were training data which had s comma a comma reward pairs so this is the sort of data that we need reward tuples then reward model the reward model can be trained reward model can be trained using supervised learning supervised learning supervised learning framework framework so typically what is done is that the reward model r theta or let's call it r phi is parameterized by a neural network is parameterized using a neural network and learned learned via erm empirical risk minimization which is nothing but the usual gradient descent based uh, objective minimization framework but the problem is obtaining this sort of data that has the state actions and the corresponding reward is often not possible especially in the cases where uh, large sizes of uh, data sets are involved okay so however however obtaining obtaining such annotated such data is not easy now the other problem that comes up is that uh, the idea of reward is very subjective right i mean suppose uh, we are trying to build a reward model then what might be a good response for a particular input for one person may not be a good response may not be the good response for the exact same uh, input to a different person right so it's it's very subjective so obtaining a scalar score that would uh, be normalized across several annotators is not trivial right therefore uh, alternative approaches for reward model training are sort of the alternate alternative data formats slash approaches are sought for reward model training
So to solve this problem, people have thought of uh, obtaining different kinds of data and different sort of models for reward model training. One such uh, kind of data that is used is what is called as the preferential data, the preferential data which has this sort of a format. You, know, you have x which is the input. In this case, this can be state or a prompt depending upon whatever the uh, use case might be. You have two pairs of outputs to it. One is yw which is the, the preferred output. This is also called, uh, this is preferred output or response in the case of an LLM. So you have yl which is the non preferred non preferred output or response so the kind of data that one would uh, seek is that we have uh, a particular input x given a particular input x we have two corresponding outputs one is denoted by yw which is the preferred output or response the kind of response that you would seek from the model. YL is another response that is not preferred uh, by, the, uh, by the user and uh, the, you, you do not want the model to go towards uh, generating such kind of responses. Now, this is the kind of data that is sought I and mean, this kind of data is called uh, preferential data where we have triplets of this sort x comma y comma y, yw comma yl. Okay, this is called the preferential data. So compared to obtaining uh, a scalar reward for a given response, this sort of data is easier to obtain because it is relative. right? So now uh, you might have observed in uh, some of these uh, uh, commercially available LLMs, when you ask a question, LLM gives you two responses and asks you to rate which of the responses you would uh, prefer. Right? So that is actually collecting the prefer prefer user preferential data. Now obtaining this sort of data is much much easier compared to obtaining a scalar reward for multiple responses and this being relative also does not have the problem of uh, uh, scale invariance because all the user is doing is choosing which data is better compared to uh, which response is better for a given input. Okay, this is called preferential data. Now given preferential data, so we have a question, the question that we would want to answer now is that so given preferential data, preferential data, how would one build How would one build a reward model? So now given this sort of data, you want to build a reward model. How is that possible is the question. There are again multiple ways to answer this uh, question. So there is one uh, very famous way which is called the Bradley Terry model. Let us look at that. This is one of the classical models that would uh, consume this sort of preferential data and uh, outputs a reward model. So now what is this? What is the predatory uh, model does? So it, com it, it models the likelihood of likelihood of YL, YW appearing more than likelihood of yl being more than equal to uh, more than yl I beg your pardon so models the likelihood of yw being greater than that of yl so that is the that is what this predatory reward model does now mathematically speaking mathematically so p of yw being greater than or equal to yl is given as e power r x comma yw 
divided by e power r x comma y w plus e power r x comma y l. It's very easy to uh, verify that uh, this sort of a model will estimate the likelihood of y l being greater than y w being greater than y l, right? Because all it is doing is computing the softmax uh, between these two values. So this is what is called as the Bradley Terry model. Now r here is unknown. Okay, in practice, as I said, what what is done is that r is parameterized using some neural network. Let's call this as r p. Okay. Now what can be easily shown is that this is equal to is equal to uh, sigma the sigmoid function of r p x comma y w minus r p x comma y l, where sigma of t is equal to one by one plus e power minus t. Okay. This can be shown that uh, if you take sigma, it can uh, uh, this entire Bradley Terry model can be represented using uh, the sigma function of the differences between the reward that is computed uh, for the pair x comma y w and the reward that is computed for the pair x comma y l. Okay. Now once we have this, note that our goal is to find a reward model, right? Now what do we need is that we seek that r v which which minimizes the or rather let's say maximizes that maximizes the log likelihood of P of y w being greater than or equal to y l, isn't it? So the a good reward model is the one that would maximize the likely log likelihood of P of y w being greater than greater than P of uh, P of y w greater than y l. Now how do we do that? We just write down. So the loss for the reward model will be as follows. We want on an expectation we want uh, the log of log of p y w greater than y l we want this to be maximized and this expectation is over x comma all data points that we have right so this is what we need we know that this is equal to the expectation over the data set that we have and this is log of sigma r v x comma y w minus r v x comma y l so that's it so this is the loss function that is used i mean one can see that this objective can be optimized if we have data of this sort if we have preferential data then by approximating r c using a neural network this objective function can be optimized so what we do is that we get the optimal parameters of the reward model v star as the one that maximizes this ebo loss This is the Bradley Terry mod way of uh, computing the uh, reward model by using the preferential data. So now once the reward model is trained, what do we do next is that we use that reward model for uh, uh, policy optimization via the policy gradient theorem. So this or PPO kind of algorithms is, is what is done.